In the last few years, the number of multi-hall entrants in the race had been declining, largely the result of the difficulty of financing one-of-a-kind multi-halls. But unlike custom or home-built boats, which are often built to wildly different standards, the F-27 is known for its strong materials and uniform and tough construction techniques. These skills have been proven with years of offshore use, including passages across both the Pacific and the Atlantic. This year, of 28 multi-hull starters in the Ensenada event, 10 will be F-27s, and one of them will win the race. Amongst the F-27 skippers, Bill Schultz in Try to Fly. Bill has been racing multi-hulls for years, and has been sailing the Ensenada race since 1962. Mike Mitchie, customer service rep for Corsair Marine, sailing the prototype F-27 Super Fox. Jerry Grant a film composer from Hollywood, California, and in fact, composer of the music in this video. Racing third movement, Jerry has recently racked up an impressive string of victories. David Niebergall, a Malibu dentist who has sailed a great variety of multi-hulled boats and will race in his Tridactyl in his third Ensenada event. John Simpkins, a building contractor from Dana Point, California, who has tricked out flying fish with all new sails and rigging for the race. Don Mitz, a California Highway Patrol officer with an appropriately named boat, and John Walton, president of Corsair Marine, considered by everyone in the fleet to be the hot F-27 sailor and the man to be. As a purebred racer, I find the multi-hull to be the most exciting racing I've ever done. Everyone seems to be moving to multi-hulls. Tom Blackler came down to talk sailing to a forum in Newport preceding the race and ended up talking multi-hulls. Because it's good competition and good sailing. It's not for everybody. Uh, I mean, it's the, the boats aren't comfortable, uh, but they are relatively inexpensive and they're very, very fast. I, for one, think that the pro level is best served at, with those particular boats. I thought that that uh, you know my own opinion was that, and I, I think the America's Cup ought to be held in 100-foot-long catamarans. But yeah, <laughs> uh, nobody's going to listen to me about that. Following the event, we asked Tom if, after sailing multi hulls for the past year he can ever go back to sailing unimorans. Um, when I, I, I first set foot on the multi-hull in uh, October of 1988. That's I mean, I had been on a multi-hull. Let's say I'd sailed a Hobie 14 with my wife off Waikiki Beach, you know. But I hadn't done anything really um, serious in multi-hulls. And when I first got on the, the P-40 Cat in San Francisco Bay in October, we towed her out of Sausalito and uh, was blown about 25 knots. And we put the sails up. We took off across the bay at what must have been 25 or 30 knots of boat speed. And my, my first impression was, my God, where have I been all my life? What have I been doing? The three days before the Ensenada event are filled with seminars, parties, and yacht club open houses. But for many, getting ready for Ensenada began with the race seminars, held up and down the coast over the preceding month. If you thought sailboat racing meant pulling the sails up and cracking open a beer, well, you better listen to this. Uh, they will broadcast a number to you that will be in the low 1000s, like 1007, 1012, 1005, numbers like that. If you take the LAX number and subtract from it the Daggett number, you'll get the pressure differential, and that's the key. We're looking for what is the difference between those two differentials. If you have a less extreme weather front, like three or four millibars coming through, uh, the wind's probably going to go blow better outside the rum line than on the rum line, and, and that's where I think it really pays off to go reaching out, try to optimize your sailing angles. Now, all of that is, is a lot of mumbo-jumbo, and that's hard to absorb. So some people don't even bother trying. They're in the race strictly to have a good time. The only prize they could possibly win is the one given for the last boat to Ensenada. In fact, to some, the race is best known for those who take it least seriously. Best known of whom are the San Francisco group that call themselves the Prospectors. And by, this is in keeping with my good friend, Hank Harris, who's standing behind the cameras, setting up of an idea in San Francisco about 14 years ago, where we were having a little luncheon from the Transpac crew that uh, raced, the boat, raced, raced to uh, Hawaii. And we had a great time, so we decided to have a reunion. We had this little dinner at Tadish's, and after a couple of bottles of Remy Martin, 
Hague and I were talking, we said we ought to do something together each year. And so we thought it should be sailing oriented and uh, we asked around and Tom Hannon, our skipper at the time and the first starting skipper said, and owner of Prospector, where the Prospectors come from, said, you know, this is this race in Southern California down there. And I said, well, that's warm. And everybody said, that's nice. And Hague went to some little known university down here in Southern California. And so it would be a good idea. I said, how many boats in this race? He says, oh, three, four hundred. I said, hell, they'll never know we were there. Let's do it in costume. And Hague says, no, no. Let's do it in tuxedos. Fourteen years ago, we show up down here. Black tie, first time. White tie, since then. With a topless waitress pouring our champagne and music and entertaining the folks in Southern California. And we've been somewhat known for that since. The prospectors have a unique philosophy on sailing. They dress to the nines, at least from the waist up use distraction rather than boat speed as the basic technique of racing, pink elephants and string quartets on the foredeck, racy films on the sails at night, attract attention wherever they go, and invite all manner of guests along. Some dressed in formal attire, others less formally. We haven't turned anyone down yet, and as middle-age crisis creeps up on us, I doubt if we're going to turn anyone down. Whether your concern is having fun, or going fast, by the Thursday before the event, everyone is in full gear preparing for the race. For the yacht chandleries of Newport, it's the busiest day of the year. In Ensenada, the Ponga drivers and trinket salesmen are preparing for the onslaught. On the Yacht Club docks, the last of the boats are being inspected by the race committee. Oh, all right. I got my slope right here. Oh, good. Okay, we're up on deck. Uh, you got your man overboard stuff and everything yes, here? Yeah. You're going to make an attachment between yeah. the light attachments. Yeah. And your strobe, I assume, is down below. Okay. Go down and take a look at that. One thing we do need to correct is make sure all the strobes and everything are attached before the race. Right. And. Um, that is over there with the radar reflector, I see it, okay? Right. Uh, flares. Uh, flares are forward. Okay. Flare. Owens. Okay. Oh, you got the good kit. All right. All right. Dates are current. 